Welcome. Welcome to New Light Living Podcast. I'm Ulrika Sullivan. I'm an intuitive spiritual life coach and a galactic astrologer. This video is a galactic astrology reading of the new moon in Aquarius at 20 degrees, 41 minutes on February 9th, 2024. Welcome. What I do in these videos, I put an outer layer of galactic points, fixed stars, and celestial bodies to the traditional Western tropical astrology wheel. And that is to help us connect with a bigger perspective beyond our Milky Way galaxy, where we are belonging to as part of our solar system, but to go further out and start to connect to our multidimensional self. So many of us are interested in what else is there to my astrology chart, my own unique energy imprint. And galactic astrology gives that bigger perspective that we now are ready for. So here you'll receive three energetic themes that I've pulled out from this new moon chart. And uh, also at the end of the video, uh, I have some questions for you. Should you want to integrate this energy some more? So stay with me for all of that. This new moon is a high frequency one. We are in a period of time uh, where we are building up energy and high frequency energy is incoming. We are getting a little taste of the Aquarian age type of energy here, but there is still an ask for us to keep purify, keep purify our lives, uh, the way we are um, relating to ourselves and others, not just in the uh, material world and the physical realm, but actually uh, purify our way of thinking, uh, gaining bigger perspective, higher perspective, the energy of oneness is incoming and harmony and balance. And I'll talk more about that within the three energetic themes that I've pulled out. But simply, we are asked to not get stuck in the polarity, but actually go above that uh, type of energy. Because here we are, the future is coming in, which is based in unity consciousness. Uh, and unity consciousness is very high vibrating. And that's what we're getting a taste of at this new moon in Aquarius. Before we go into the new moon chart, I'd like to share the three themes with you. The first theme is Blu-ray frequency incoming. And that is based on the beautiful trine that the new moon is, is making to Lipa's Nihal fixed star. The second theme I've called the lesson of sovereignty. And here we have a highlight of Saturn's position in Pisces opposite the fixed star Draco to Bon. And also two very supportive trines, beautiful ones to uh, Sirius B and to the Shapley attractor. The third theme I've called influx of multi-galaxy harmony. And that is due to a... Uh, grand cross here that I will be going into further in uh, theme three, but also I'll give you a little bonus at the end since uh, the North Node and Chiron are getting closer and closer. So I'll share some uh, views on that as well. The new moon is also talking about that there may be topics and things that we have to look at and deal with or approach in a different way because it's unpopular. It's something that we may have uh, left under the rug, so to say, and here it comes. There is there's a buildup of energy now to the upcoming Uranus-Jupiter conjunction in April, and the ruler of this new moon is Uranus. And uh, you may know that Uranus is uh, highlighted strongly within this new moon for many reasons. It is that influx of uh, cosmic energy, but also a highlight, a reminder for us that there may be some unpopular uh, topics that we may have um, you know, not looked at or are remaining to look at before we step into and are able to step into unity consciousness and more harmonious, non-polarized energy. So this new moon is really that 
uh, reminder of, okay, now it's time to look at those unpopular topics so that we're not leaving behind uh, polarized topics within ourselves, but also in our environment. So this new moon can feel pretty radical and disruptive in many ways because of that high frequency energy that is coming in that is going to stir up any uh, unbalanced energy within ourselves that uh, are due to either be released or transmuted. At this new moon, there's also a desire for truth, because once we have come to a truth within ourselves about a topic or a person or a situation, once we are in alignment with that truth, can see it clearly, then we can also let it go. So this new moon is very much in spirit of purification, cleansing, and truth. Are you curious about your own galactic alignments? Download my Galactic Alignments Reference Guide, and there is a link in the description below. Next, let's take a look at the new moon chart. So here we have the new moon chart. And as you can see here, the sun and the moon are together in Aquarius, 20 degrees, 41 minutes, and making a square to the ruler of this new moon, Uranus. And if you notice, the 20 degree mark is really the entry, the portal to the spiritual realm, the third deacon. And especially in Aquarius here, it's associated with very high frequency, unity consciousness. So this is the doorway we're standing in now at this new moon in Aquarius, uh, because Uranus is going to be much more highlighted as we go between now and April time frame, April 20th, to be more exact, when Jupiter and Uranus meet up in conjunction at 21 degrees of Taurus. So here we have this uh, growth opportunity presented to us to really uh, step into and getting that taste of the high frequency energy at this new moon. So next, let's take a look at the first energetic theme for this new moon. So here we have the first theme that I called blue ray frequency incoming. And you can see here the sun and the moon is involved in this beautiful air trime forming with the Lepus constellation and the fixed star Nihal at 20 degrees of Gemini and also the south node at 17 degrees of Libra at the moment. Now, this air trine is a beautiful high frequency uh, influx of energy. And uh, the fixed star Nihal is associated with blue ray frequency. And if you associate with the blue ray frequency, you may feel this uh, new moon really strongly and beautifully. There's a flow of energy here as in any grand trine. So uh, this also honors the past lives that we are having with the South Node involvement here is this beautiful combination of the past, past lives, but also incoming high frequency blue ray energy. So this new moon is really a, a gate, a, a opening, a portal for uh, this mix of energy honoring the past. Uh, through the south node alignment, but also incoming beautiful blue ray, high level, high frequency, uh, compassion, oneness, unity, consciousness. And the new moon in Aquarius portal here is that uh, invitation for further purification, for cleansing, and in the spirit of truth. I want to show you here the Lepus constellation and the fixed star Nihal, which is really south on the sky map here from Orion constellation that you may be more fami familiar with. Nihal is associated with very high frequency energy, uh, very individualistic, but artistic and empathetic because the blue ray indigo 
soul has a natural psychic ability, a natural uh, telepathy abilities as well. And at the same time, a very strong uh, association to the physical realm. So this is a bridge energy, uh, very high vibrating, but also very, uh, very comfortable and very associated with earth. And therefore, the blue ray energy is a seasoned interdimensional traveler. So here we go. The, all of these keywords that I mentioned here are associated with this high frequency energy that we will feel at this new moon coming in. And it's a little taste of the future. So enjoy that. Nihal frequency also shows us what is required to uh, for this high frequency energy and its compassion. It's the unity between masculine and feminine within ourselves so that we can uh, live a life with a higher perspective in compassion for ourselves, but also for others and our environment. So if you associate with the blue ray frequency, you are here as a way shower, uh, also uh, often with a mission to anchor light, high frequency light to earth. Both realms are very natural for a blue ray indigo soul to traverse. So the blue ray uh, indigo soul is also born with a higher vibration, higher frequency naturally. So the uh, psychic abilities and telepathic abilities are heightened all from the get-go. So if you have alignments to Lipa's Nihal in your chart, you may be uh, also very naturally psychic and telepathic and also being uh, very linked to your imagination and artistry, both when it comes to mind, but also in the physical world. Here we have the second theme that I called the lesson of sovereignty. In this theme, Saturn at seven degrees of Pisces is highlighted. Saturn is now uh, out of orb. If you recall, if you watched previous videos, you re recall that Saturn has been in alignment conjunct formal health, the royal star formal health for many, many weeks. This new moon, formal health is out of orb from formal health and now instead uh, is opposite. Draco Taban. Draco Taban, we talked about in the Gemini full moon in November. So I'm not going to go in depth with a description of Draco Taban here, but this opposition is highlighted to um, remind us that it is important to stay sovereign in this influx, in this incoming high frequency, because it's easy to get either pulled in polarity or not feeling grounded. Uh, so Draco Taban, this opposition with Saturn is an important reminder, not only from our past experience around polarity, but also the reminder that it's important for us to stay in our own sovereignty and not being influenced from either external forces or self-doubt or, um, you know, past life um, polarity memories that we may not have uh, purified, transmuted, because we are moving into an environment with a lot more options, a lot more adversity, a lot more creativity. Uh, in the way we are offered to move through our life. But we're not left here. We are not alone. We have two supportive trines uh, on each side of this opposition, this strong reminder through Draco Taban and Saturn. One to trine to Canis Major Series B, which is a very supportive 
uh, adaptable energy. Series B is associated with innovation and supporting a, a flow of change, adaptive energy. Now, Saturn is also making a trine to Haumea and Shapley Attractor, and the, it cannot be more uh, multiverse than that. New Earth energy in a beautiful trine, infusing that uh, hope, that a bigger perspective, the um, multi-dimensional perspective to this lesson. So this mix of energy and Saturn being very much supported and this mix of energy around um, adaptability, innovation, but also new earth energy, as opposed to the Draco Taban associated with, uh, you know, past polarity and restriction and the reminders that we may get from this new moon to um, further cleanse our past and really associate that with the highest truth of how we associate with ourselves and our environment and situations. So as part of this second theme, I'd like to highlight an interesting finding here between seven and eight degrees in multiple signs. So if we start with Saturn at seven degrees of Pisces, making a supportive sextile to Jupiter in Taurus at eight degrees, and Jupiter is in alignment in a conjunction with Andromeda Titawin. Titawin is this beautiful Venusian energy, uh, and the fixed star is associated with uh, energy around spiritual warrior, uh, also around boundaries and living in harmony, uh, applying boundaries. So Titawin is this beautiful, uh, harmonious energy. And then we have Mercury at seven degrees of Aquarius, making a sextile to reticulum and alpha reticulum fixed star at eight degrees of Aries. And what I've seen in readings for individuals who have alpha reticulum in their chart is that uh, it's this futuristic, beautiful, highly ascended futuristic energy. And sometimes these souls uh, have had a soul journey traveling from the future to uh, now. It's this high frequency energy that is connected to Mercury in Aquarius right now at seven degrees. And so all in all, this is uh, eight, seven and eight degrees is in the physical realm. There's a link here between the Venusian spiritual warrior the futuristic, highly ascended energy, Saturn and Pisces, who are opposite Draco to Bond, giving us that reminder of staying sovereign in uh, adversity, and Mercury at seven degrees of Aquarius, enabling this uh, adaptable uh, communication and uh, feedback loop between these alignments at this new moon. I want to show you Andromeda Titawin here, and some of you have seen the Andromeda constellation on the sky map before. Uh, Titawin is not as known of a fixed star, so I've kind of placed it in here in pink so, so that you can see uh, the location of the star in relation to the constellation of Andromeda. Titawin, to me, feels like a very uh, advanced spiritual warrior carrying that divine feminine harmony at the same time as being a, a groundbreaker that has the ability to break through. And Jupiter's conjunction to um, Titawin here at this new moon is another indicator of that the expansion of this Venusian focus, the Venusian uh, divine feminine uh, warriorship, if you will, is is of highly importance. A spiritual warrior from a divine feminine perspective or Venusian perspective may be uh, the opposite of a spiritual warrior on the mask divine masculine side. If we talk archetypes here, this I feel is a very much a uh, 
resting, receptive energy, but in full mastery in that space. So if you want to connect with this uh, Andromeda Tatawan energy some more, have a look at Arya Luma's channeled energy here in terms of the image of this female spiritual warrior. The third theme I called influx of multi-galaxy harmony energy. And here we have a focus on Venus and Mars. Venus and Mars will come into a beautiful conjunction on February 21st at five degrees of Aquarius. This theme is going to highlight Mars more so than Venus, but I want to highlight that Venus at this new moon is trying the ruler of this new moon, which is Uranus. And it's also worth to mention that Mars and Venus are traveling behind Pluto here as they gear up for their uh, conjunction in February. So this purification, this cleansing at the personal level is key. Uh, Mars and Venus are really asking us, inviting us to come into harmony between our masculine and feminine energies within ourselves. But also notice where in our environment is there potentially an imbalance. So here we have the grand cross energy that I mentioned earlier. And if we start here with Mars in a square to Andromeda galaxy at 28 degrees of Aries. So we are invited to consider an input influence energy from our sister galaxy M31 Andromeda galaxy. And we also have Andromeda galaxy making a square to Canis Minor Procyon at 26 degrees of Cancer, and also Mars making an opposition to Canis Minor. This is the reminder that spiritual technology of a new kind is incoming. This T-square uh, between Mars, Andromeda Galaxy, and Procyon has been uh, highlighted before, but now it also is highlighted by the square between Mars and Shapley Attractor and Shapley Attractor and Procyon. This Grand Cross is a growth opportunity, a massive growth opportunity, taking in more input from another galaxy, multi-galaxy influx of energy. Uh, and overlaying that with the multiverse of Shapley Attractor and Homea, who are bringing, still bringing in long-term new earth energy and mix that with new spiritual technology, new ways of relating and connecting within ourselves and to a higher perspective of multi-dimensional character. Mars is activating this Grand Cross now by being at 27 degrees of Capricorn. So now it's becoming real. It's activating, initiating this growth opportunity for us. Now, we're not done yet with this. If you notice, Mars is also making a supportive sextile to Neptune at 26 degrees of Pisces. And I have it here. I removed the Grand Cross to help us focus on Neptune for a moment as part of this theme. Neptune is making a square to Orion Scythe and also a square to the galactic center. Now, this builds a T-square. And again, any T-square or Grand Cross is a signature of growth, of expansion, an opportunity for transmutation of energy. Orion Scythe at 26 degrees of Gemini is the master transmuter. It's a transfer station. Anyone with Orion Scythe in their chart is a master transmuter of negative energy to positive energy. So Orion Scythe is here to support Neptune but also this massive energy from the galactic center at 27 degrees of uh, Sagittarius. Neptune here in charge of the spiritual evolution here on Earth is uh, charging Orion Scythe and galactic center with that last purification 
that influx of cleansing and here we go <laughs> but like it's a it's a very transmutational opportunity for us to get into this higher vibrational energy this uh, momentum that this new moon is providing us so here we have a little bonus at the end. I want to draw your attention to Chiron and the North Node. They are coming closer and closer to each other, North Node traveling in reverse. And the exact conjunction is going to happen at 16 degrees of Aries on February 13. And that's going to be another flip of a switch. And uh, the North Node is conjunct at this time the fixed star Tau Ceti in the Cetus constellation. And Chiron is going to be conjunct Andromeda Alparats. And if I take those two energies together, Tau Ceti, uh, more diplomatic and diligent energy, uh, and Andromeda Alparats is associated with uh, freedom and freedom of limitations, uh, imagination. So the two of those together. So this duo will also make a square to Lyra Vega at 15 degrees of Capricorn. Lyra Vega is um, very feminine spiritual mastery. And the duo will also make a square to Canis Major Sirius A at 14 degrees of Cancer. Sirius A is also spiritual mastery, but more from a masculine perspective. So this is also another highlight on February 13 of divine masculine, divine feminine, spiritual mastery coming together uh, in the North Node and Chiron. It is something here that we uh, are invited to uh, evolve from into the future. So we are invited to uh, some sort of milestone here come February 13th. So this new moon is electric with the new moon in trine with Lepus Nihal, this Blu-ray frequency that is uh, highlighted through this trine, but also the sovereignty, Saturn being so central, opposite uh, Draco Tuban, reminding us about staying sovereign while we are in adversity, supported by beautiful trines on each side, but also this grand cross, this influx of multi-galaxy harmony with Procyon involved, with Haumea and Shapley Attractor involved, and Mars activating it all. Now, this is a high vibrating new moon, giving us a little glimpse of the future, highly evolved energy that is coming in and building up all the way until April. Uh, all planets are direct right now. So, so as usual, I have a couple of questions for you. Should you want to integrate this new moon in Aquarius energy some more? The first question is, how can you take advantage of this opportunity for cleansing, purification, decluttering? This is the time where we are invited to uh, remove and refine our ways of living, both within our relationship with ourselves, with others, but also with our environment. The question also here to ask yourself is, what do I need? Because the imbalance that may be in existence uh, for that purification or cleansing to happen may be due to that imbalance uh, that Saturn is reminding us of opposite Draco to bond there. So what do you need? Once you answer that question, what do you need? Notice if there is a balance that can come into more harmony within yourself as you satisfy that need. Maybe you need more rest. Maybe you need more activity. That type of um, balance within is super important. The second question is, how can you stay sovereign in times of adversity? 
the times we're moving into now are going to be fast moving. There will be more options. There will be more uh, ways of solving things or approaching things. And you may feel that there you have so many options to choose from. And sovereignty has to do with staying true to yourself. How can you stay sovereign, even if the environment around us are, is speeding up? Sovereignty also invites us to set further boundaries, boundaries so that we can stay more harmonious within. What parts of your life could use some more boundaries? A gentle no, uh, and maybe even yes. <laughs> the third question is, what has been activated here at this new moon for you with Mars activating this a flurry of grand cross energy. What is it that you feel momentum around? What is the inspiration behind it? Now, all of that is qualities of this new earth uh, energy, inspiration, harmony, balance, all of those types of qualities are ways of this high frequency energy that is going to lead us into the future. Are you curious about your own galactic alignments? Download my galactic alignments reference guide and there's a link in the description below. Thank you for listening to New Light Living Podcast. I'm Ulrika Sullivan. I'm an intuitive spiritual life coach and a galactic astrologer. You can find me on my website, ulrikasullivan.com. Come visit me there and learn some more about what I do and what I can offer. I will be back soon with another video. Bye.